last year, Skidelsky, who was Keynes' great um, biographer, had an article where he was suggesting that he might win a Time Man of the Year. Well, of course, Obama won it. But I reckon uh, Keynes might have come second. Of course, Keynes was already on the cover sheet of Time magazine way back in 1965 uh, when Friedman made that remarkable comment, we're all, we're, we're all Keynesians now, though he actually qualified it later, saying he didn't actually mean that. And then, of course, Nixon in 1971 also said that he was a Keynesian. I don't, Obama hasn't actually said anything about Keynes yet. There's a certain uh, anti-English spirit in Obama, I believe, because um, he apparently Gordon Brown gave him uh, the speeches of Winston Churchill, mm -hmm. uh, and Obama removed the statue or the bust of Churchill from the uh, the Oval Office. Um, but anyway, there's a there's a lovely other expression going around in Washington, which I think Hillary Clinton has used, which is to say, "Never allow a serious crisis to go to waste." And uh, me as an unreconstructed Keynesian, I'm certainly doing a bit of pump priming as much as I can to, to write on Keynes. Not that I've got anything scholarly, but just journal articles. Um, and, and certainly uh, reminding the world that Keynes was uh, a great economist. Uh, the number of people have actually writing on Keynes. Krupen reissued uh, the uh, return of depression economics. Skidelsky's uh, writing a book on the, the return of the maestro, Keynes, which is coming out in September. And if you Google Keynes, as, uh, Mark, uh, as Don said, you can get all sorts of material there, including lectures, maybe even this one, uh, eventually. Um, so it's a, it's a wonderful time. And w one quote that comes to mind, though, is, uh, and I I'm going to focus more on who's afraid of uh, uh, Keynes. Of course, that comes from a, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf, who was one of Keynes' friends in the, the Bloomsbury group, though she actually gave Keynes quite a hard time. But... I'm going to just talk about um, Keynes Redux and then talk about Keynes and his current day uh, detractors. And there's still many of them around, uh, which irritate me quite a bit. Um, but um, the second part of my paper, and you've only got the summary of the paper. Um, uh, the paper yet is almost finished. The, the, of course, the great meltdown of last September and, and, and Greenspan's admission. And there's been such a flurry of books on this. And there was a book recently put out on Bernanke. And the author, I can't remember, it's a Dutch name. He said that Greenspan's PhD was one of these Mickey Mouse PhDs, which is not in the public domain, which I found that amazing. And you, you sometimes you just wonder, well, how much do these people really know? I mean, Greenspan was regarded as this great oracle of wisdom. And then he makes that horrible admission, and then he's, he's only disappeared from the public view, though he did say we need to recapitalize the banks. Um, but I was amazed that, that Greenspan's PhD is very hard to access. The, the next line I was going to talk about was that um, it, this period of history that we're in, uh, there was a lovely expression that the governor of the Bank of England, Mervyn King, said that he said, we have, we've just seen the end of the nice years. Nice being non-inflationary, continuous expanding economies. And we're going to say hello to the dice years, deflation in contracting economies. And that acronym is, is used in England a little bit. We haven't heard it much here. As our beloved Prime Minister said this morning, we're in the, one of the most steepest synchronized recessions. And I said, ah, you actually get a, a perverse sense of pleasure being Scottish, I suppose, about uh, this uh, sort of... Uh, and depressing news because I think, well, more students will do economics. That's one of my other mm -hmm. claims to fame. That more students will want to do economics, they might want to do economic history, and they might even want to look up the history of economic thought. I can tell you, for instance, that uh, Keynes has actually made an appearance on the YouTube. There's someone there singing a song, singing the praises of Keynes with a chorus line. It's a bit like rap. So he's, Keynes has even broke into the YouTube and has a history of economic thought, which is amazing because apparently YouTube is what the young people now do to, to converse with each other. I don't know if Keynes has hit Twitter yet, anyway. Um, but anyway, there was a lovely expression uh, picked up from a lecture in England about, the, with deregulation and neoliberalism, that horrible expression, that finance was out of its box. And I suppose finance has to be blamed for this, this crisis, even though we just don't know how we, we got there. There's a, there's a lovely line uh, in an old uh, Talking Heads pop song, How Did I Get Here? I mean, last, this time last year, we were talking about inflation and the overexpansion, and Mr. Rudd declared moral war on inflation. And then 12 months later, we're, we're on the brink, maybe not on the brink, but we're, we're closer to a Great Depression than ever before. 
uh, there's a lot of um, echoes of the 1933 World, uh, World Economic Conference uh, with this G20 meeting that's being on tomorrow. Anyway, we're financed out of its box and, and you know, this wonderful whiz kids in the financial markets of Wall Street. One of Keynes' great lessons about, and one of the great lessons that come out of the general theory about, you know, uncertainty and how, in fact, the act of investment is, is a punt, it's, it's an act of faith that you could actually lose your money. All that was forgotten, of course, with the great bubble economy, with low interest rates, with financial wizardry, some the, the, the mathematical equations, some of which I don't completely understand. The, all that uncertainty was actually uh, excised out of investment behaviour. Uh, there was Keynes spent one of the great messages of the general theory was that investment behaviour was extremely unpredictable. That it was governed not by calculable risk, but by uncertainty. That keyword, uncertainty. Anyway, we had this terrible financial crisis, the subprime crisis. Uh, there's books coming out in America on that. And we, we then had the Minsky moment. Now, when, 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 when that, of course, is referring to Hyman Minsky, who's also made a great comeback, Hyman Minsky's uh, Minsky moment, it always reminds me of the, the famous ad in Australia about uh, a Minty's moment, which is that candy we used to have. No one's actually mentioned that, you know, the, the, the candy you used to have when you were having a wonderful time. Anyway, there's another thing called the Minsky moment, where we actually go from uh, mania to mass panic, and we've already had that in the States. Well, of course, we've got the Keynesian moment now, and Don referred to that quickly, that you know, we're all talking about fiscal stimulus, and I, I agree with Don about you know, all these people coming out of the cup and say, oh yes, we're Keynesian, and, and, and is that what Keynes would actually recommend? Well, I don't know. Uh, and, and I certainly think he would recapitalize the banks. But one thing we could, should mention, though, is that there was two multipliers in the general field. The good old expenditure multiplier, you might remember. But there was another thing called the expectations multiplier, which is this thing that was going to work on the animal spirits so people to try and get them to act instead of inact or not act. And that's uh, something that we don't hear much of. Um, anyway, one last point before I move on to the last part of the paper is if we're going to go into a deep recession in this country, I, I just wonder how it will play out in affecting uh, attitudes and philosophies in this country. You might remember 1991 when we had the, the, uh, the Keating recession and how there was a great campaign against economic rationalism in this country. I distinctly remember there was a conference at Melbourne University on this very theme. Eventually, the campaign against economic rationalism or neoliberalism died down as the good times came back as, as the jobless found jobs. Anyway, let me get now to the last part of my paper, which is the, the thing about these detractors of Keynes. And I've, I've got to tell you that uh, as a freelance writer, I try and get articles in this. Well, I don't try and write, get articles in the Australian because it's hopeless there, but I try and get articles in the Thin Review. And I recently had an incident a couple of months ago when I was having an article slamming Milton Friedman and the uh, opinionator didn't want it because he said, well, you know, why don't we slam Keynes? And the, the thing that annoys me about the Australian in particular is that they run this line of just pure neoliberalism. It's almost like it's a, a publicity front for the IEPA, the Institute of Public Affairs, and the Centre for Independent Studies. And uh, they, if you look at their websites, they've got a whole team of journalists writing articles trying to dissuade us from a little bit of Keynes and, 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 and putting out some absolute nonsense. I mean, there was a, a lady in the IP recently referred to Keynes as defunct. I, well, we know he's defunct, but saying his ideas were defunct and arguing our public stimulus was irresponsible, blah, 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 even though the IMF last night actually said it was quite responsible. It's only 1% of GDP. But anyway, the, the, the thing that annoys me about these think tanks is that they really do hog the opinion pages of the, the Australian and also the Australian Financial Review, not so much in the age. I have to see Ken Davison there. Um, um, so I don't actually send any articles off to the Australian. And I, I, I sent my last article to the Australian Financial Review actually pertains to this paper. Way back in 1981, 364 Keynesian economists wrote to the wrote to the Times a public letter complaining that Margaret Thatcher's U-turn against Keynesianism was going against uh, all economic wisdom. And you might remember many people have written articles about it. And recently, the 25th anniversary of that came up last year. It so happens that just in January of this year, 350 American economists associated with the Cato Institute wrote a public letter to Obama before he took office saying they didn't agree with his 
statement that we all need, we all agree that we need to have a fiscal stimulus. And of those 350 signatures, three, three of them were Nobel Prize winners. Uh, and I wrote an, an article to the Fin Review on that, comparing one letter with the other letter, both letters being ineffective in changing opinion. Uh, of course, the Fin Review didn't want to use it. Well, they, they say they might use it. They said it wasn't really um, a, a, a grouper. You know, it wasn't really a, a grabber, as they say. You've got, to, you've got to grab the public's attention. You know, I, thought, well, I thought it was quite a good article. Anyway, um, getting to these libertarian think tanks, well, of course, one re why are they so against Keynes? Well, the f one argument is the relative deprivation syndrome. The, 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 the atmosphere, the mental opinion, the, the, the voices in the air, the ideas in the air are changing or moving away from libertarianism uh, towards intervention, towards regulation, towards a little bit of Keynes. A more scholarly paper attacking Keynesianism was put out by Robert Carling in the CIS in February where he mentioned five critiques of points against a Keynesian stimulus package. And he mentioned things like, well, there's a variable multiplier impact, there's a crowding out thesis, which will probably come back when we have a May deficit budget. The Ricardian equivalence argument, which I, I find preposterous, that Ricardian equivalence argument is the idea that uh, if we give a tax cut or we increase public spending, consumers will slacken back on their spending because they factor into the, the long run horizon that their tax uh, imposts are going to go up. It reminds you of Keynes' thing about living in the short run. You know, uh, in the long run, we're all dead. Um, the other thing is that um, the CIS are compl and other lonely academics, uh, well, some, uh, uh, the odd angry academic, have said that, well, we don't want a permanently, if we have public stimulus, we'll, we'll then have a, a permanently large public sector. There's also going to be distortion effects and, and, and sectoral bias. Robert Barrow says that Keynesian's ideas of fiscal stimulus now are voodoo economics. Robert Barrow, of course, was one of the contributors or the originators of, uh, of um, the Ricardian equivalents of bringing back that old idea. And then, so the, the, these um, people that are, are writing in against Keynes, I mean, I suppose they've also got philosophical objections to Keynes, to the public sector. Though I don't think they actually know Keynes. I think they should actually go and read Skidelsky, who captures Keynes. That Keynes was actually not a socialist. He wasn't into state enterprise. He was a tax and spend liberal. He was rather fiscally modest, as, 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 uh, as Don mentioned. And uh, maybe, and, and sometimes I have doubts whether he actually would approve of some of the, the, the fiscal stimulus that Obama is engaging upon, the, 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 the wave of debt that's been incurred in that country. Um, Another colleague, a good friend who's actually in Hetzer, actually had an article published in Quadrant, I see over there, uh, called the, da the Dangerous Return of Keynesian Economics, uh, talking about, well, we need a more supply-side response, that the SAGE law, which is still there, uh, operating at a subterranean level. I don't think I, I agree with SAGE law at this point in time. There's also, of course, if you look at the web, uh, there's, and the American press, there's still this old theme about who runs economics in the world. Is it Cambridge or is it Chicago? Uh, Keynes was never really received in Chicago in, in 1936. He was uh, basically criticized. And, and the, the, the thought strikes me that maybe one of the reasons for the American bias, or the, because most of this um, um, antagonism towards Keynes comes more from America, was the simple idea that Keynesianism was, one, was a British idea. There was a book called 50 Great British Ideas, which I gave away to someone. And one of the inserts was Keynesianism, you know, Keynes. Um, of course, what I'd love to say to these supply-side critics and people who invoke, say, his law and people from the IPA is, what alternative is there? It's the economics of Tina. Remember the economics of Tina from 1981. Tina was, there is no alternative. Margaret Thatcher saying that she was going to break inflation by having uh, what Dennis Seeley called punk monetarism, pure deflation, tight money supply, etc., and no public stimulus. She was going to break that cycle. He, uh, okay, so I would say to the critics of um, Keynesian, what, what is your alternative? Do we just wait for the supply side response to come? New Zealand is actually doing this. It's interesting to see how they're going to fare. Just fiddling around with marginal tax rates, working a little bit on infrastructure, on supply. But I, I, I still think we need the, the impulse of demand, uh, of some type of demand. Uh, and and um, 
that's, I think that um, Rudd and Obama and Brown are right. And the last reason why Keynesianism uh, still finds a lot of negative press, particularly in America, is, of course, the style of the man Keynes. There's a, there's a marvelous book out on Lydia Lopovica, who was Keynes' wife, and she mentions that Keynes was not just an economist, and you know, she found the company of economists rather hideous and boring. And Keynes, of course, was this tremendous wordsmith. This is one of the reasons why I was attracted to him. Tremendous po prose and poetry and beautiful expression, the, the general theory and, 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 and his other works, uh, which is the thing that actually attracted me to him when I was doing economics way back in 1975.